forecast that we are not as many as we used to be but the Lord is here let's arise I want us to know that there is no one that can forecast God even though um, the priest the, the procrastinate I mean whatever they have estimated or say sometimes will be right but at times God will always be God to prove the scientists that I am God. Let us praise Him. Praise my soul, the King of heaven, to His feet the dribbles bring. Ransom, ill restored, forgiven. Who like thee, the praise should ring.
need you for who you are. That's a dream.
For us even to gather again this day I want us to bless him So many things have happened Even this past few days But God has been faithful to us Even in our unfaithfulness The Lord has remained faithful I want us to worship him I want us to adore him Father we give you praise this morning We adore your holy name O oh God We are grateful O oh God We want to thank you O oh God For food on our table I want you to bless the name of the Lord for his provision, for guiding you, for protecting you. Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, all the adoration, O oh God. Bible says that who are we that he is mindful of us? 
Lord, we'll thank you, Almighty God. We'll thank you, Almighty God. We just want to thank you. We'll return all the glory. We'll return all the praises that is due to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we'll look all around us, O God. And how we could see, your God, is your mighty end, O God. Lord, we'll look all around us, O God. All we can see is your mercy and your grace and your favor, O God. Lord, we'll thank you. Lord, we appreciate you, God. We say be thou exalted, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have praise. The Bible says in the book of Numbers, chapter 7, verse 1. It says, when Moses finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it and all its finishes. He also anointed and consecrated the altar and all its intensives. I want us to pray this morning and begin to declare, O oh God, that the ground that we worship today, the Lord will sanctify it in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray, God, sanctify this place, sanctify this place in the name of Jesus. Let it be only you, O oh God, that will be glorified in this assembly today in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray that no man will be seen in the name of Jesus Christ, but that God Almighty, the Trinity, only he will be seen in our assembly today in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare, O oh God, that this grand and worship is sanctified by the blood of Jesus and by the spirit of holiness in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that the spirit of holiness will sanctify this assembly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, sanctify this assembly by your spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to pray and take authority over this atmosphere, declaring that Jesus Christ alone will be Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we'll pray, O oh God, and we'll sanctify, we'll declare, O oh God, that in the day service, O oh God, that you alone, O oh God, will be Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. That you alone will be Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us begin to come against every plan of the wicked one, every devices of the enemy, every plan of the devil, that, Father, it will not stand in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them take counsel together. It will come to naught in the name of Jesus Christ. That only the counsel of the Most High will stand in our gathering today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to pray for ourselves that Lord breaks upon us afresh this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to lift up your head, yourself unto the hands of the Lord. The Father, as I have come today, oh God, I come and knew I come afresh. Breathe upon me afresh, oh God. Yesterday is gone. The anointing of yesterday is gone. Lord, I am here empty, O oh God, to be filled by you. Lord, fill me anew this morning. Fill me anew this morning. In the name of Jesus, let, you, let there be your breath afresh upon each and every one of us, O oh God. As we come this morning, in the name of Jesus, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let it be upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Christ. Lord, let your anointing, O oh God, fill us up this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, fill us up this morning. Breathe upon us this morning. The breath of life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Breathe anew upon us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we will not go back the same way that we have come, O oh God. That there shall be a new thing upon our life this morning. That you will do a new thing in our situation this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that every one of us, as we have come, our faces are different. So likewise, every of our needs are different. We are going to pray that Lord meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus Christ. Meet us at the point of our needs, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, meet our needs this morning. Meet our needs this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we are going to pray for our other members that the Lord will order their footsteps in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will bring his people to his presence from the north, from the south, in the name of Jesus. Lord, will bring sons from afar. Lord, will bring daughters from afar, even to your presence this morning, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we say bring your people to your presence, God. Those that you have proposed to bless this morning, Lord, bring them to your presence this morning, in the name of Jesus. And we are going to pray, oh God, that everything we are going to do today, oh God, Lord, take preeminence, in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for this preacher of the word this morning, that Lord, Bible says, oh God, that those that bring good news, how great is their step that bring good news. We are going to pray that Father, oh God...
the preaching on the anointing that the Lord will meet each and every one of us. The word of God will bless us and we will not go back the same way that we have come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Spirit of the Most High, we worship you. Lord, we give you the praise this morning. Thank you, O oh God, for the gathering of your people this morning. Lord, we have not gathered unto man, but unto you. Thank you for bringing us, O oh God, to your presence again. Lord, we pray that God, in the name of Jesus, you will meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that this morning you will breathe upon us afresh, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of the service, O oh God, your name and your name alone will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Good morning, church. The Bible reading for today will be taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 10 to 16. Okay. I read, The Son of Man come to seek and to save the lost. While the people were listening to this, Jesus continued and told them a parable. He was now lost, he was now almost at Jerusalem, and they supposed that the kingdom of God was just about to appear. So he said, there was once a man of high rank who was going to a country far away to be made king, after which he planned to come back home. Before he left, he called his ten servants and gave them each a gold coin and told them, see what you can earn with this while I'm gone. Now his own people hated him, and so they sent messengers after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. The man was made king and came back. At once, he ordered his servants to appear before him in order to find out how much they had earned. Verse 16, the last verse. The first one came and said, Sir, I have earned 10 gold coins with the one you gave me. May the Lord bless his reading in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Um, it's time for, time for announcements, but before we start it, um, do we have any first timers with us in the church today? Could you raise your hand? Praise the Lord. Could you, we want to know your name, who invited you, and where you're coming from. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my first name is Stanley. Um, the pastor invited me. All right. Thank you. Um, after the old church, could you wait behind? I'm gonna wake up in. Um, the announcement is gonna be televised, and as you listen, may stay blessed. Good morning, church. Happy Kingdom Teenagers Conference. My name is Ayude Adekoya, and today we're here with Rastafalabi and Josh Ronlongkwami. Let us sit back and listen to the following announcements. Sunday service starts with Sunday school on Sunday, 8.50 a.m. to 11 a.m. Bible study Wednesday, 8, 8, 8, 7, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Workers weekly meeting Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8.50 a.m. Workers leadership monthly meeting, third Friday of every month, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. General workers bi-monthly meeting, third Friday of the months of January, March, May, July, September, and November. 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Ministers weekly meeting every Saturday from 9 p.m. to 9.20 p.m. Night of Glory, last Friday monthly, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. House Fellowship, last Thursday, last Thursday monthly, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Daily prayer meeting every day, 9 p.m. to 9.45 p.m. Happy birthday to every August celebrant. Those that are celebrating their birthday this month are Ayodele Aloriponi, August 7th. Adedeji Ibrahim, August 9th. Okpeyemi Akin Tonde, August 9th. Oluwa Milola Adebiyi, August 10th. Benga Akin Kumi, August 10th. Emmanuel Ajahi, August 11th. Elizabeth Elizabeth Awoyemi, August 11th. Olamide Omolade, August 12th. Chukundi Anthony, August 14th, Chinwe Jigede, August 14th, 
Sandra Pita, August 17. Berlusconi Ina, August 17. Ibra Ire Bami, Adewi, August 18. Emmanuel Igbenova, August 18. Ayo Oluwa Ige, August 19th. Elo Oluwa Brian Akintunde, August 19th. Bami Dele James Ar Arowo Shafe, August 21st. Ola Dapo, Al Ola BEC, August 25th. Ola Sumbomi Adewura, August 27th. Oluwa Shikami Oni, August 27th. Ola Shade Ajebuwe, August 28th. Arike Karunwi, August 29th. Olua Toni Adegvite, August 30th. Happy Kingdom Teenagers Conference. Uh, thank you and listen to the rest of the church service. Sit back and enjoy. Praise the Lord. It's time for um, offering. It's time for us to give unto the Almighty God out of the abundance that He has given to us. Let's remember what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 7, so let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And 9, and 8, sorry, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Praise the Lord. So let's give cheerfully and let's give bountifully. The Lord bless us as we give. Amen. Amen. Uh, can we please rise as we take the hymn? Amen. Amen.
God, for this opportunity you've given to us to give to you once again. Father, we are grateful. Lord, we pray that you will bless us and bless our offering today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will use this offering to increase, to expand your kingdom here on earth, Lord. And that we, our blessings also, even as you have promised, that you will pour them down from heaven. And our storehouses will not even be able to contain them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And our Sunday school this morning, the, um, one of the lessons said that in this life we would see persecution and all what um, Joseph went through. As a Christian, we are going through the same. And we all, as Christians, we are praying and looking forward to getting to heaven. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
appreciate our choir again. Let's appreciate the choir. Uh, God bless you. I know that um, the Lord will take you to a higher and higher place in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord will continue to empower your voice in the name of Jesus. Uh, please let me welcome somebody beside you. Good morning. Um, good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning to somebody beside you, somebody at your back. If you don't know the name of the person beside you, ask for the name and ask where the person is living. If you don't know the name of the person beside you, Lord, just ask for the name of the person. So, and I think you know one new person today. We are welcome in Jesus' name. Please ask her because we're going to do tests. Yeah. You know, it's good that we know ourselves like this. I think, bro, bro, damn, you are looking at the back because you know that I want to call you. <laughs> What's the name of uh, the person beside you? Uh, uh, can I ask you that one? You will know that one now. Uh, <laughs> What's the name of the people? Oh, all the people around you are people that is around you. So, oh, no, okay. Okay, I think I should have, bro. Hello, good, sir. What is the name of the person beside you? Bro, hello, good, sir. Bro, okay. Okay, God bless you, sir. Where is he living? You didn't talk about, is he living in Newark or Abington? Newark. Ask where is he living. So that, is it Newark? Uh, okay, God bless you. Uh, well, it's good to just know ourselves. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And I am happy to be here again this morning. Um, happy to see everyone of us. This last week was a very great week for us in um, redeemed places of God in North America as we have um, the North America Convention. I know that many of us, we, um, we are used to the redemption camp in Nigeria, but there's a redemption camp here too. And I want to encourage you to plan to attend it maybe next year to also see what God is doing. It's, may not be as big as the place in Nigeria, but I think it's a fairly big place and um, a fairly big uh, um, state too that is very big. So it was a very great time for us as we have the convention and the title is A New Beginning. And I believe many of us will join online. And especially for us in this church, it's also another new beginning as we have three or four that were being ordained. Um, myself, ordained as a pastor, and I have my wife and um, Minister Fadino ordained as deacon. Um, I think we'll be excited more than that. We are grateful to God. You know, some people will be wondering why do we you know, this is our ninth year. Why do we wait so long for the ordination? Where well, it's uh, kind of a, a personal, a personal, um, how will I say it? A personal conviction that I think that um, I have to let it go. You know, 
Uh, and because we are not just running after title, we are just we just want to do the work. And um, I was a pastor before I come to redeem, but I I just felt I don't want to pursue title. And but when my father talked to me and I said, "You are in redeem, so are you living redeem?" I said, "No, that's what they are doing redeem." And now I actually see that my action is affecting, you know, some other people too. Otherwise, you know, people like our minister Fadin also will have been ordained <laughs> several years ago, and even my wife. So we have to also allow uh, God to prevail. And that's why we have to wait this long. And I pray that it's a, it's a new beginning for us. God is waiting for us to come to the session of new beginning. So we are having a great grace of God upon us in this place and we are having a new beginning and um, with a, 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 a new level of wave of glory and I know that it's going to just not be a team that is a one time team it's going to be a prophetic declaration for us in this place as we are entering to a new beginning and by the grace of God this year by the grace of God we are actually entering to our own property in the name of Jesus. And we know that whatever the Lord, whatever the Lord has done for us, it will be permanent in the name of Jesus. And all this stress um, where it's a new beginning for us. So let's forget the past. It's a new beginning. And we know that the glory of God will continue to shine and radiate upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage all of our plan for next year is in Texas. You know, you will need, and it's also a good time for you to also go away. So, you know, so plan, begin to save now for the tickets so that you can, you can be part of it and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Because that's, I know, that's a great opportunity to see our Father in the Lord and to actually uh, be part of the service, you know, be part of and it's not as crowded as Nigeria so you can actually come closer as much as possible at least to yesterday so two days ago we have our holy communion you know I was so tired I don't even want to we have been there doing a lot of things I said no this I don't want to miss this privilege you know there's one time opportunity you don't want to miss it this opportunity and as we are going you know I'm just telling you because you know sometimes you will not know the opportunity and the the and once you miss it you may not be able to recover and as we are going i i park my car and we are going with my wife and i was a play the block i was telling my wife this place oh, uh, is for some special people <laughs> so and we were going we just met our regional pastors oh, okay follow me and as we follow he was talking was talking was talking i went there with my wife <laughs> you know in my heart i was saying this man should have even let us go but he was talking, I just waited there, carrying his bag, stayed there, talk with it one person, talk with another person, talk with another person. At the end, okay, he said, okay, we are going. And you know as we enter, our mother and the Lord was just coming. And that was a very great opportunity for me to be able to meet her. You know, God had just been delaying me to be able to have that kind of encounter. It may not be, it may not be a counter that is, um, I may not see it again, you know, and they want us to have a pastor's dinner because they want to give us a little bit, they wasted our time, we stay for too long, so they actually finished the, almost finished the thing before we get there, so by the time we get there, we met food, and I was really hungry, I said, okay, let me just get food, <laughs> we have, there is the time they want to be meeting, to be, to be giving food, so as we are coming, so because we already come, they call the first people, they move. So we join, the, we join them to get the food. And we want to enter to get the seat. You know where they put me? Beside Daddy Jew and Mommy Jew, where they were sitting. That's where they, they put us. Now it's, a, it's, it's just, you know, when they were wasting the time at the place, you know, I was, this thing, why are they wasting time? Why are they doing this? If we have got there earlier than that, that place, all the people that were sitting there, they would not stand up. So they have stood up, and I felt that God was just preserving that place for, for us. And my wife said, oh, let me sit on the seat of Mommy Gio. I said, why are you sitting in that place? <laughs> she didn't want to get connected. 
Now, it's not because she just, you know, it just, she just felt it's an opportunity, let me just get connected. You know, I'm just sharing it that because sometimes you have opportunity and I don't know when I will be able to have that kind of privilege again, but we take advantage. So any opportunity you have also, when our Father and the Lord is coming, anywhere he's coming, please do your best to be part of the, part of it. Is our daddy carry a grace that is not common. Yeah, and it's not, I've not seen anybody common, common, having that kind of common grace in the whole world. Daddy was sharing a testimony with us. Maybe about 15 years ago, he went to South Korea with um, uh, Paul Young Show Church for a meeting. And he saw that Paul Young Show was having seven services. And he said, God, so you can do this. And he prayed. Now, he said about maybe five years ago now, or three years ago, I'm not sure the time. He went back to the place. That time he couldn't see Paul Young Show because he was nobody. He couldn't see Paul Young Show. But this time, he booked an appointment. And when he get there, Paul Young I don't know how many of us we have heard about Paul Young Show before. Yeah, but, uh, many of us, you need, to, you need to read some books and also know some people that God is using. Paul Young Gisho was, uh, um, it's a South Korean, have the largest church there. So can you imagine somebody doing seven church services? Okay, now daddy said that when the people came in the service, he told the people that came on that Sunday and said, please don't come next Sunday. So that the people that do not come today, they will be able to come to church. So that is a, so it's possible for you to have a show that is overflow. And you are telling people, pandemic has not started. There's no pandemic. Telling people that don't come next Sunday so that the people that did not come, they can come. So that they prayed. Now he said, when he went there like three years or five years ago, I'm not sure. He said, he booked an appointment and he saw Young Show. By the time he get to the meeting, Young Show said, please, I've been hearing about you. Can you please pray for me? I don't know if you understand. Now, this is a man that daddy was sitting down, was praying to be like. Now, the same man is saying, can you please pray for me? Now, the first time he went there, he, daddy also know that this opportunity, somebody is doing bigger, somebody is doing something greater than what I'm doing. I need to launch into the opportunity, into the grace. Now, God so much now empower him that is even greater than the man that he was want to he wants to be. You know, that's the, that is the opportunity of an encounter. And it may be one time that you may not be able to have that encounter again. So anytime you have that privilege, you have that opportunity, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Because Jesus may never come that way again. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Let's rest up this morning as we just... Um, maybe after the end of my service, I'm still going to call... Um, my wife is not here now. Maybe they will have finished that time. And bro, our deacon, Jim, Fadiho, to come. Then myself, you also pray for us as we come into this new office and this new grace that the Lord has given unto us in the name of Jesus. Let's turn our Bible together to Matthew. Today we are talking again on Arise and Serve. Arise and serve. Matthew chapter 21 and I want us to read verse 28 to verse 31 Matthew 25 and 21 28 Okay, Matthew 21, verse 28. And um, we're all going to read together. One, two, go. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go walk today and in my vineyard. Verse 29. Oh. Went. Fast 30. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. 
He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Verse 31, the last one. Which of the two did what his father wanted? May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Father, we come again this morning that, Lord, you will breathe upon your word. Breathe upon us in the name of Jesus. Let your word bring liberty to us. Let it bring healing to us in the name of Jesus. Let your grace, Lord, be multiplied upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. I pray that myself and the hearer, all of us shall be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Use me this morning, Lord, as a vessel son to honor. Use me to bless your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's have a seat. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. And please, by the way, like, um, we are beginning now that this coronavirus is still coming from with different, different variants. So please, let's continue to uh, wear our mask. And those of us that have not taken vaccine, I want to still encourage you, please take the vaccine. You have seen some of us, we have taken enough for the past one month or almost two months, and we are still alive. So, it's even more than two months, yeah, and we are still alive. So please, you will not be, I know there may be negative testimony concerning it, but no one in this church will be that part of negative testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise and serve. I've told us there are three categories of people, and I'm starting again from that place because last week, because of time, we are not able to look at the scripture. There are three categories of people that serve. There are people that are serving. They served before, but they are no longer serving now. There are people that serve, and they are still serving. Then there are people that never serve. There are people that never serve. Now, the first category, people that serve and serve, if they are not serving now. I said some, they are not serving because they quit because of people. People criticize them. People attack them. You know, people, they don't appreciate them. And so because of that, they do not serve again. In Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 8 to 9, Jeremiah said that, you know, I want to quit. I don't want to talk about the word of God again. But he said, but the word of God, I cannot keep quiet. The word of God is like a fire in my bone. Then there was this man in Luke chapter 19. When Jesus began to give the, the talent, and he gave him one talent, and the man, because the citizen did not accept them, he refused to, to use it. So let's look at that scripture. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to read verse 13. The Bible says, so he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas, ten which is ten pounds. But this, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. I, I'm reading from the NIV, uh, from the NIV fashion. I think I should read from the King James to make it easier for us. So he called them, give all of them ten times and ten pounds and each one pounds. And stir them, occupy till I walk. Put this thing to work until I walk. Now, verse 14 said, But his citizen, they hated him. And they sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. We will not allow him to do anything. We don't appreciate him. We do not want him to serve. So maybe you are serving. They said, No, who put him in the choir? Who put him in the ocean department? Who we'll put down in this um, evangelism department? We will not allow you. We we'll make it difficult for you. That was what the citizens said. That was what the people in, the, in, the, in that department, they said. They said, we will not allow him. And despite that, some people, they use their pants. But this particular man, because of what the people said, he also, he came back. And um, let me say that first now. Verse 20. And he said, Lord, here is your pan, which I have kept, laid up in a napkin. I have kept it, I ran it up. I kept it for you, but I did not use it. Once, you see son, and he said, I have ten more pans. He gave him one, he have ten more. Another one said, I have five more. But this one, he said, I wrap it up, because the citizen, I know you are, 
you are a austere man, you know, you are a difficult man, you are a wicked one, you want to sow, you want to reap from where you did not sow, you know, I am serving this department, you cannot talk to them, you cannot let them, you cannot let them support me, you, why are you there when they were insulting me, now you want me to just be putting all my strength there and be facing the battle, and you, you are just standing there. The man was complaining like that. Was well, so you are an austere man? You are a difficult person. I have kept you. I have, I have kept your talent. Maybe there are some people here this morning. You just kept the talent. You kept it. You are not committing sin. You are faithful. You are living your life to God for God. But the gift that God has given to you, just put it there. Not putting it to use. That is one category. Maybe you are in that category this morning. Then we have another category that they quit because of the world affair, because they love the world. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Demas depart me, deserted me. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. Why? Because he loved this present world. He loved this present world. Then I said the third category under that is people that quit because of moral failure. Because of moral failure maybe because they fall into sin and they fall into one error or the other so they quit because people and you know and i need to encourage some people here today maybe you are there and also need to encourage us too when men fall among gods don't let continue to throw stone to them they're already in the in the dish so why are you throwing stone to them they may fall for anything they may it's not because i'm encouraging them they may fall maybe some may fall because they embezzle money, some may fall because they commit fornication or they commit adultery. That maybe because of that shame, you relocated and you say you are not serving again. Why? You are your blessing is still there in heaven. Our God is not a wicked one. God did not want you to fall and fall forever. God wants you to fall and you rise up. In fact, the Bible said that my enemy do not rejoice against me. If I fall seven times, I will rise again. So that means God. Es expect a peradventure. You fall first time, second time, third time, fourth time, seventh time. Still let the devil not win. Do not allow the devil to win the battle. Tell the devil, I will rise again and rise. When they brought that woman to Jesus and said, We caught this one in the adultery. Jesus said, Jesus did not condemn the woman. He said, Go and sin no more. So the only thing you need to do is that rise up and sin no more. Do not allow that to stop you from serving. Do not allow that to hinder you from receiving your blessing. Whatever may be the situation, because of that, maybe they punish you, you're feeling ashamed. Shame will go. Do not let your reward go with shame. You do not let your reward go with shame. Observe the punishment. Observe the discipline. So that it can strengthen you, they can empower you, they can help you not to fall into the same thing next time. It can be like an alarm to you. Observe it. Don't observe it grudgingly. Observe it willingly. Observe it like someone that has a destiny. Observe it like someone that is going somewhere. And rise up again and serve. Rise up again and serve. So maybe there's a moral failure that because of that, you decided not to serve. Do not be like Judas. It was failure. You know, you fail. God, Jesus still wanted to help him, give him a communion, something that should threaten him. But yeah, Judas went away. And instead of him repented, he went to go and hang himself. And he lost forever. But Peter also failed. He did not even just fail once. And that's why you see that in this race, there's no one that can say that I am strong. Bible says, let him that thinketh that he stand, take it, lest he also fall. Peter failed. He failed the first time. He failed the third time. And that, 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 that one that we know is not, not the one that Peter only. That's not the, that was not the only failure. That was not the only failure. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus was asking, He said, Who do men think that I am? Do you know Peter did not know who did Jesus, who do men think? Or many of them they did not know. And after he discovered and said that you are the son, it was Peter. He said, You are the son of God. He said, this one, it is not flesh and blood that revealed it to you. But my spirit revealed this to you. But just few verses after that, few verses after that, Jesus began to talk and said, I will on the thought, because he believed that Peter now is a man of the spirit. Peter should understand the things of the spirit. So Jesus began to share the things of the spirit and said that I'm going to die and I will rise up the third day and now they will crucify me. What did Peter say? Never! 
you will not die. That was failure. Now, if the pastor of the church is not in the spirit, do you think if I, it's, it's going to be a shameful thing. It's, it, it, maybe you didn't understand it. That was a pastor of the church. And there was a message that is coming. And the pastor did not understand. Do you, do you think the pastor will be proud to come and say that I miss it? No. It's, it's, it's not going to be proud. That was a pastor. But he, God was giving a message. And he missed it. And Jesus said that flesh is the one that is talking. Can you imagine that you said that pastor is the flesh that is leading him? No pastor will be, will be proud to say things like that. But it's, it, it is possible. And when that is possible, don't let that now push us into the dish and you feel that you don't have the spirit of God again. No. Don't let that one now think that you are, you are no longer, people will no longer respect you. If they no longer respect you, that is their own problem. You, you are going to heaven and you are going to heaven and just know that you are going to, it's not good that you fall but once you fall do not remain in the falling state rise up and so jesus said that get thee behind me satan can you imagine who jesus was calling satan peter the pastor the one that is going to hand over the church to but yeah he rise up so if your situation is like that today please rise up and if you know anybody around that a situation is like that do not join the people and begin to throw stones do not throw stones. Do not condemn. God will never condemn anybody to death. Even when the prodigal son left the house, the father was waiting for the prodigal son. Even though he cannot join him in the same way he's doing, he cannot go into this, but he was waiting, expecting him to come back. How much more? All of us. Expect them to come back. Expect them to come back. So do not go to the internet. I know there's so many... Well... So many people, let me just call it like that. That on the internet today, bastardizing this, speaking again this, they are just watching the message. They are just looking at the message. I know very soon they will begin to follow our own message too. So all the simple, simple errors. Same, and I know they will even be talking about those of us that we didn't hear English very well. Say, so, you know, that pastor wanted to say he, and he says she. Because they don't have, they don't have, so they are listening to one hour message. The only thing they are looking, they are looking and they are publicizing is because somebody supposed to say this one, they say this one. They are not even blessed. They are, they would are so adding their hearts that they are no longer receiving blessing. And because they are not in the kingdom, that's not the pattern of the kingdom. And I keep sharing it to us. The pattern of the kingdom is not the pattern that exposes errors. The pattern of the kingdom is not the pattern that ridicules. The pattern of the kingdom is the pattern to lift it, to rise. It doesn't mean it's not to correct error. It doesn't mean that it's, not, it's going to join error, but it's not going to leave you in error. It's not going to punch you while you are in error. It's not going to stone you while you are in error. It's to bring you out. It's to bring you out. It's to encourage you. When Peter fall. In another time, Peter faced so that you know it's not Peter. Uh, God is just a merciful God. He failed before Jesus died. He failed even after Jesus died. I would have thought that Peter would have learned his lesson. Maybe probably you are here today. You feel that oh, you should have learned your lesson. You still find yourself falling again. Do not be condemned. Do not condemn yourself. Do not condemn yourself. Let me show you that last one where Peter fell again. And that is not even the only one again. I can still continue showing you. But as he continued to fail, continued to fall, he did not stop serving. He repented and he moved on. But let me show you this one in John chapter 20. John chapter 20. Oh, sorry, 21. John chapter 21. And after this thing, I'm reading from verse 1. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the seal of Tiberias. And on this wise he showed himself. There were, first two, there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples. Look at first three. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. This is the man that should say, let us go and pray. When the pastor have become a fisherman instead of a soul winner. When pastor loved money, because you know this is someone, if it is this day, 
And the pastor just said, Church, we are going on a business trip instead of on a retreat. People, by the, before the end of today, people will have captured. Pastor Peter, go and fish instead of go for soul winning. They begin to query, is that the reason why the pastor is called? Don't you see this pastor as bastard dead? He is going to fish instead of go for soul winning. People will have hear it. You know, it's not a small thing I'm telling you. It, it looks easy when we are reading it. But just imagine that instead of me leading you now, I come into this place, I begin to talk about businesses. I begin to talk about how you will prosper here and in the world. No matter what will happen. No matter how you want to get it. I begin to preach all manner of things. Instead of focus, and there are people that are doing that. And, I, and there are people that all they are doing on the pulpit is to lead people to go and fish. Do not now condemn them. So I will show you what, what, what happens after now. There are people, there are men that are still doing that now. But do not continue to throw stone and begin to publicize it around. Oh, this is uh, the seal of Tiberias. That is now, he's on, the, he's on this jet now. He's buying this one now. He's doing this one now. They still have God. You will see the, what Jesus did. It, you will see that it negates all our own actions, all the way we behave. Look at what Jesus did. Now, and Jesus has so many reasons that he would have even lambasted Peter. Simon Peter said, I go and fish. And they say, Lord, we also will go. What else do you want them to do? Their pastor is going. And that's why we pastors should be very careful that God should help us to stand, to not lead people to do the wrong thing. And I pray for myself, and please pray for me. I will not lead people to do the wrong thing. Please pray for me. Just point your hands and pray for me. That God will help me. I will not lead people to do the wrong thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for that prayer. The same unto we also will go. And they went forth. And they enter into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. You know, anytime you want to go outside the will of God, there is already a ship that is waiting. A ship is always waiting. And that ship will, could be relationship. We have some relation that we say, yes, we want to join you. That ship may be friendship. That we just say, we are friends, we are here. It's inside, you are already inside that ship. It may even be a fellowship. That I see some people in the church that say, yes, you are planning to start your own church. You are already camping against your pastor. And you are starting that prayer meeting. You are starting that fellowship. You already see that ship. And you just tell people and say, you see, this is our pastor has, has basculated. We need to show him that we are the one that God is using now. And now, you already have the ship. But you are the one that call it fellowship. But it's a ship. And what did the ship do? And that night they caught nothing. The sheep will hand you with nothing. The sheep will hand you with nothing. But see Jesus, when he came, and that is the one I want to be like. But when the money was come, Jesus stood on the shore. Can you see? He stood there welcoming, waiting for them. That is the father. That is the mind that we should have. He stood there on the shore. He was waiting for them. He cannot go into the water to go and be doing the nothing with them. But he's waiting for them. He stood, he stood there waiting for them. And he did more than that. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Now you see. They couldn't even identify Jesus again. No revelation again. They have lost all that. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any mate? They said unto him, no. Now, Jesus knew that their problem is what? Food. That was why they were preaching about fish. That was why they were preaching about how to go to fish. It is food. They were hungry. They have lost the sight. And Jesus said, do you have any food? With all the things you have done, they said nothing. Now he told them, put your net on the what? On the right side of the ship. I am sure that if you are the one, if we are the one, 
Oh my God. That you see people that you trusted. You see the choir member that you trusted. You see the usher that you trusted. You see the minister that you trusted. You see a pastor that you trusted. And he loved the people. Instead of coming to a prayer meeting, he went to go and do over time because he was looking for fish. By the time they come back, you know the kind of message, you know the kind of word we'll have said. But Jesus, he still said, okay, well, you have been sent the application, go and put the application in the right place. Go into the right place. Can you see, show somebody that, you know, when we are talking about love your enemy, these are the practicality of it. Maybe you didn't understand it. We didn't really understand it. That somebody that you trusted, somebody you hand over, Jesus had to come back. You remember the first time Peter wanted to have him, met him, met him, and he wanted to touch him. He said, I've not gone to my father. So Jesus has gone to the father. He has to come back just for our sake. So you can see how far God can go just to restore a backslider. He would have sent fire. He would have raised up somebody else. But no, he will give as many opportunities as possible until the person say no more. Until the person want to do like Judas. Jesus will say do much more. He said put it on the right side. I can never imagine that Jesus will now tell them how to catch fish again. He said, put on the right side and you shall find. And they cast therefore now. And they were not able to draw it for the multitude of the fish. Now verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he got his fisher coat unto him for he was naked. That is the beginning of his repentance. I don't know if the time will permit me to be able to explain it, but let me try to summarize this. He was naked. Are there no people there when he was naked? Please, I want to, I want a response. Are there no people there when he was naked? There are people there, but he didn't feel any shame. Now, there are things that you do. You are proud to do in the midst of the people. You don't consider yourself naked. There are things you can say. There are dress you can even put on. But in the midst of the people, there is no shame. Peter knew. Why did he remove? Why did he want to put on the clothes? He knew that he cannot dress like that in the presence of Jesus. He can only remove that garment. He can only remove that glory in the absence of Jesus. But immediately he discovered that Jesus is here. What did he do? He covered himself. Now, Jesus will have thought to himself, see, now you have even naked now. You are empty now. See the way you are doing among the people. But Jesus did not do that. But thank God for Peter too. He put on his clothes. He put it on back. Because he discovered that the way I am now, I am not presentable to Jesus. You know, there's something that we do. People will not correct you. People will not talk. People will think that it's normal. But it is you that you know that with God, this is not normal. Don't think other will correct you. Other disciples may not even correct you. All the disciples, they will not they didn't even correct Peter, even though he was their leader and they were seeing his nakedness. Can you imagine? They saw the nakedness and is their leader. So it's possible sometimes you see the nakedness of your leader. Don't you dare to begin to throw stone. It's possible because of your closeness. Because of the, of the opportunity. You saw something that a leader do and I say, ah, ah, I don't know that. Ah, this, my, this minister also can do like this. And the next thing you will do is that even you take the picture, you know if it is this day now, Peter's picture will have been on the internet. Naked Pastor Peter. Caught red-handed naked. I, I believe God will give you understanding. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. 
that they would have put him on that Facebook or what is it? Instagram. Because the people that saw the nakedness, he's not general people. There are people that are close to him. And if you do not understand the matter of the kingdom, you will have put it there on the Instagram. And people will have lambasted Peter. That Peter will, will never want to come back. How is he going to stand on the pulpit again when his picture is already on the internet? These are principles of the kingdom. It's not principle to expose our nakedness. Pray for the person. Let him realize his nakedness. When he had, he has not even seen. If the person is a children of God, just minister, just preach like, Peter, like John said, it is the Lord. Show him again the Lord. Maybe the pastor could not see the Lord again. Show him. Share the word of God. If you know somebody that preached the word, give the pastor, buy that book. and say, pastor, I want to present to you. Or buy it to, for the leader. Can I give you this book? I, I hear this message. This message bless me. I know that it will bless you. Can you listen to it? You may think that the person will not listen. You may think we will not listen. We listen. But do not now take that and use it to disgrace the person. You are not disgracing the person. You are disgracing the kingdom. It is not about the person. It is about the kingdom. Now, see what Jesus did again. First name. As soon as they were come to the land, what did they saw? John chapter 21, first name. They saw a fire of coal there. And fish laid their horn. And what? Bread. Is that fish part of the feed that they caught? Is it part of the bread that they have? That's the father. That's in the mind. You can find the person for fellowship. You have ah, this person have fallen, this person have done this. Please, can we have a lunch? Can we go for dinner? Then you can talk. You can deliberate. Can, you can talk. That's the mind of the kingdom. That is the pattern of the kingdom. And we saw that because I have a few more things to share with you. As Peter followed on like that, we saw that he repented. The only thing God is looking for him is to serve. He's to serve. And after they have died, Jesus invited them to come and dine. Verse 15. So when they are dying, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, Love thou me more than this? After they have died, he has eaten. And he said, unto, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know that I love you. Do what? Feed my lamb. So, feed my lamb. And Jesus did not just stop at once. He came the second time. He came the third time. And the third time, until Peter break down. Realized that, yes, I have gone far. Allow God to do that. Allow God to, 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 to speak to the people that have committed error. And if you today you are falling because of moral failure, because people have seen your nakedness, and because of that you want to totally go into dungeon, please, do not go to the dungeon. Come back. Come back. God, men may want to expose your nakedness, but God is not interested in exposing your nakedness. God is interested in you getting covered. And immediately, you know, Jesus principles sometimes. Oh my God. I'm just praying I should be like him. I just pray I should have a heart like him. Now, if it is somebody you find naked like that, do you know the kind of disciplinary action you will put the person to? And say, okay, because we find you naked. We don't know maybe they are naked in money or naked with uh, immorality. You will put in first, go and fast seven days, 30 days and prayer, and sit at the back. Then, when we see that your case is, um, we can be able to hear from heaven that you are okay, then you will come back to join the minister group. That would be the normal process. I'm not saying that doesn't work, that doesn't good. I'm not because sometimes we need to have some procedure which is okay for us. We need to have some principle that will help us. But I want us to know that that principle, when you put before the word of God, when you see that this principle does not work, go with the word of God. Do not let anybody, if it is this time, Jesus did this. 
If it is one pastor that did what Jesus did, I will show you. Maybe you have not seen it. It will have been, it will have been, people will have, they will have rejected him. They will have bastardized that man. Look at what Jesus did. After he told him, he said, do you love me more than this? Do what? Feed my sheep. Come into the service again. Somebody that just, they just find naked. Somebody that just left the puppet and gone into the water to look at the fish. He didn't say, okay, now you need to come back and go back to workers in training. I think I didn't train you very well. And that's what I will have done. And I'm, as I'm sharing this message, I'm hearing it also, you know, God also is talking to me. And I few days ago, God also was talking to me. That some, somebody that's supposed to have joined the worker. I wanted to send him a, a, um, one form to them. And God said, why do you want to, why do you want to do this? Why, why can't you even just do your work as well and just, and just, and began to, let me not share all those things to you, to you now. And just say, why are you wasting, why do you want to go this long way? Why do you want to go this long way? They are my children. And God will just simplify that thing in my heart. And you know, as I began to ruminate about it, I began to see more and more that I did not understand before. Something that, you know, something that somebody's about to just do for one day, I would just say, oh, because I want to see, as if it is me. I want to see, oh, let him do it for one month. As if it is me. It's not me. It's not us. He said, feed my sheep. And so in case some people will doubt it, he said it the second time. So 17, he said unto him, the, okay, first time, um, 17, he said, unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, love it thou me. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, love it thou me. And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Come back. Join the workers. And God is calling some people today again. Join the workers. Feed the sheep of God. Join the team. Feed the sheep. Don't, fall, don't, 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 don't. Because you are, don't remain in that dead. Don't remain in that nakedness. Don't remain in that error. Come out of the error. Do not be ashamed. Leave the people alone. Come to God. Feed the sheep of God. He didn't subject him and say, well, go and do this recovery meeting and all that. He let him feed the sheep. It's just to let us see the, the, the broadness of the love of the master. And God is calling us also today, feed the sheep of God. And the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I feel I should just stop at that point. I know I have, I've not even preached my major message, but I have just have a conviction in my spirit just to stop at that point. So let's rise up as we just pray. Let's rise up as we just pray. Those of us that are serving before, those of us that are not serving, this opportunity for you to just ask God for grace. Maybe you also ask God for grace so that you will finish well. You will continue to serve. You continue to feed the sheep. I pray that you will not enter you will not leave the work of God and begin to pursue fish. You will not begin to pursue fish. And I want all of us to know in any department that you are serving, our assignment is to feed the sheep and not to feed on the sheep. I will repeat that. Our assignment is to feed the sheep and not to feed on the sheep. Don't take advantage of the sheep because they are sheep. Feed them. Maybe you are in the hushing department. You are also feeding the sheep of God there. You are in the sanctuary department. You are also feeding. And I want to also draw to your attention. Jesus said that three times. Said that three times. Maybe it's in case some people will not understand. Say in case Peter did not know that you are to feed the sheep of God. You are to feed it. You have to take care of it. I don't know if the media can help me get that fast in another version, maybe an IV. I want you to just see the way they put the feeding. You have to feed. You have to take care of the sheep of God. Then are you part of the people that are feeding the sheep? Oh, this also said feed the sheep. Don't worry if you don't see it. Don't see it. I know I've read in the play that said take care of the sheep and care for the sheep. But are you part of people feeding the sheep? Or you are part of people feeding on the sheep? Two group of people feed the sheep. Are you part of people that are feeding the people that are here? You are feeding them. Maybe you clean the floor before we came, 
or you are part of people that clean the chair, or you are part of people that play the instrument here so that others can dance very well. You are feeding them so that they can dance, or you are part of the choir, or you are part of the ocean, or you are Sunday school that also feed, or you are part that they are feeding on them. You just take advantage of where well, I know that uh, Bamdele is there to play the guitar for me. I know Statoni is there, he will sing very well and I will dance. And you are just sitting down there, you are enjoying. I know some people will be here, they are will clean the floor before I come. I mean, I will just come and sit down. Are you part of people that are just feeding on the others? Okay, thank you for this. He said, then give my sheep food. So our assignment is to feed the sheep of God. Every one of us to feed ourselves. Every one of us, God expects that we should belong to people that feed. And whatever situation, if you are falling or you are still standing, know that God plan for us, assignment for us is to continue to feed the sheep. So ask God for grace. If you will need to ask God and say, Lord, I'm sorry, you need to go ahead. If you need to put on your clothes, you have been naked. All the people of the, even you have exposed yourself, you have been naked. People have seen your nakedness. They have seen the way you are hungry. And you are hungry because you are among the disciples. People do not talk to you. And you think that that hunger is part of your weakness. No. You need to cover up. That is not what God wants you, people to see. Maybe you are covetous about money. Maybe the way the people are pursuing, the, they are pursuing over time, they are pursuing this. They also see the way you also, you are pursuing it. They say, ah, so our pastor also is like this. He's also like this. No, that's not what God wants people to see. Because they do not talk does not mean that it is, it is, it is, it is correct. Maybe you also now you have joined the people of the world, you dress anyhow, and you are just exposing yourself. You don't have any, any integrity again. No, don't let that one hinder you. Maybe because they have seen that. They have seen that nakedness. You fed them. Why would I go to the altar? Why would I join the worker? They will say, oh, no, 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 no. Please come back. Ask God for strength. Ask God to empower you. Ask God to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Ask God to empower you. Ask God to strengthen you. Ask God and make a fresh commitment like Peter did. He said, you know, Lord, that I love you. He said, do you love me more than this? He said, ah, you know I love you. Do you want to prove to God today that you love him more than this, the pleasure of the world? You love him more than the pleasures in this world. You love him more than all the things, all the gold, all the diamond. You love him more than the, the dollars in this place. Are you saying to God, Lord, I love, I love you more than this? God is saying to you, do you love me more than this? More than these dollars, more than these people, more than this time, more than this pleasure, more than this country. Do you love me? Do you desire heaven more than America? Do you desire this place? Do you love me? But Peter said, you know that I love you. He, you know that I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Can you please pray for yourself today? Lord, help me. I want to be part of the people that are feeding the sheep. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. There are people here today that you are making a fresh commitment to God that you want to serve. Even if you have been serving before, you, are still, you want to make a commitment to serve more. Just put your hands on your chest and join me together as we make a fresh commitment that we will serve. We will feed the sheep. We will not feed on the sheep. We will feed the sheep. We will not feed on the sheep. We will not take advantage of my brother or my sister because I know that she will be there. Even though that is what you're supposed to do. You say, well, I know Sister Banke will be there, so why will I bother myself? No. If you are part of people that want to join today, I say, God, I will be part of people that will feed the sheep. Just put your hands on your chest. I'm going to pray as we commit ourselves to God's hand afresh to serve, to rise to serve. Lord, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, commit myself to your hand and my brethren, my brothers and sisters, even as we come humbly again before you today, that Lord, you will give us grace to serve your people. In the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for us men that may have fallen, fallen into error, and because of that, they do not want to rise again. Lord, I pray, give them courage 
threatened him. As you threatened Peter, that he arose and he began to serve again. Lord, I pray, let them not continue in condemnation. Deliver them from that guilt in the name of Jesus and leave them up to serve you in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, as we rise, Lord, we will rise to feed your sheep. We will rise to feed your sheep. We will rise to serve you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Peter rise up and began to compare himself. Say, oh, what will happen to this? What will happen to this? The only thing you told him, he said, you follow me. I pray, Lord, that we will not compare ourselves. We will follow you. We will follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. As well that we have abandoned our duty post, like Peter, bring us back home. Bring us back home. Bring us back into our duty post in the name of Jesus. Oh, they told Peter and said, it is the Lord. That was when his eyes opened. I pray last night that we do not know. We thought that we are working for pastor. We thought we are working for redeem. We do not know that it is the Lord we are working for. Lord, open our eyes afraid to see you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Yes, Tajira. Let's pray for our pastor. Let's just pray for him. Let's thank God for the message and let's pray that the Almighty God will continue to help him even as he asked us to pray for him before. He will not lead the people astray. Let's pray he will not send the wrong message. He will not preach the wrong message. He will not mislead the people. That the Almighty God will hold him in his own right hand. He will lead him and that he will continue to follow and he will continue to serve God and continue to feed the sheep that God has placed in his hands. Father, Lord, we thank you for the message and we thank you for our pastor. Thank you, Lord, for how far you've brought him. And Lord, we pray that you continue to hold him. He will not disappoint you. He will not fall by the wayside and he will not mislead your people. He will not lead the people astray. He will not deceive them. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I just want us to pray one more prayer. Um, we had prayed this prayer during the workers' meeting. I want us to pray it again. There's a storm that is supposed to be coming this afternoon. I want us to pray and commit ourselves into the hands of God. They said it's a hurricane. Hurricane Henry is supposed to be coming. They said buy food, stay home. Buy food and water. Make sure you don't go out. Try and stay home. There will be flooding. There will be destruction of... Um, property and whatever because of the wind and high wind and all that i want us to pray that the almighty god will protect us we will not lose anyone we will not lose our property we will not lose any member of our church any member of our family let's pray some of us may be going to work this afternoon let us pray that god will protect us god will lead us god will help us in the name of jesus this storm will not come this storm will pass by and we will not be affected in any way in the name of jesus let's soak ourselves in the blood of jesus let's soak our families in the blood of jesus everything that belongs to us let's commit into the hands of god father lord we soak ourselves in the blood of jesus we pray jehovah that you will have mercy protect us O lord in the name of jesus we pray that we will not have cause to cry we will not weep in the name of jesus whatever this hurricane is called Father, you are the creator of heaven and earth. Everything is in your hands. Lord, we pray you will protect your children. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Before we take, uh, say the grace, the youth conference will be coming up this next week, starting from August 23rd to August 29th. Praise the Lord. I thought we would clap for the youth, the youth conference. You are all invited to join. Everyone is invited to join the service on Sunday. Next Sunday will be starting at 8 a.m. So please be here on time. The Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Praise and the Lord. Wait, before we do the final one, I said that I will call... Uh, um, Deacon Fadino, please can we appreciate God and uh, Deaconess Omar Umiafolabi 
and myself, and I want the shot to please pray for us, as the, like I told you that they have just anointed us. So um, I want all the shot to please pray. Then I will please call Pastor Yenwile to please come and round up the prayer. Please, Pastor, can you please come? Let the shot please just pray for us while the pastor round up to pray. Let's pray. Let's continue to pray. Intercede in the spirit for them. The garment of glory that the Lord has put on you. The garment of glory. Let's pray. The Asha will go in here on the fire. Masonda le kaha manda. Ye ko pa sukadidi prosondoli la da. Pray. Masakada. You will not lead us into error. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are leader and commander in this generation. In the name of Jesus, you will stand before the throne of God forever and ever. Makunda le saka, de kapusu kahanda le ko prakanda le lede, ye kompusu ki dahudu lende le ke. Marco Prasandala. Keduro Tiri di In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As our Father, I pray in God. And you know, Lord, and you know, Bam, or Baulua, and Olua. Arabari bi aribi ti aribi rabata Olorun o ga ogo Oba to ti wa ka yo to wa iwo lo pe awon won yi o pe ni ni sola eni si ran ni ise la beru ai beru eni a je fun loruko Jesu ise ti Olorun ran yin e o je la je ye The Lord has committed is flock into your hand. You won't lead us astray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Ke mo Olorun si. Ke duro ninu Olorun. Ke duro ni waju Olorun. E o ni yes In the name of Jesus Christ. Awa ten dari wa no. Emi Boro, Spirit of Obedience. Emi Tao Le Boro Si Ile Nu, Tao Le Tele Yi Teo Ko Wadodo Jesu Ko Ba Le Wa. We will not be disobedient children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Enjoy. Get get the Olu Wati Fe. Own lossy big giga. A big giga no mugba dura and a can in no while if you are sawati. In the name of Jesus. Mori tabi leon jenny wajua. As he thou rorosi wani ori. Ah. Nen won't get tabi little luati per se. Oh, ne pet in bed. Bogo wa la je loruko Jesu. Ogo ni fun oruko Oluwa. Thank you eternal Father. Blessed be the holy name forever. In Jesus wonderful name we pray. And let's say the final word now. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be Maranatha.